What's up everyone? I'm Austin Harga. This is Rex Alexander, the president of the Handheld Laser Institute. And today I told him I was reading on the internet, lasers can weld anything to anything. Just about, that doesn't mean it makes it a good weld. We're gonna do what we can to make good welds between dissimilar materials that are metallurgically compatible. So check it out, for today's experiment, we're gonna to attempt to weld different metals to each other. So here on the table, we've got three different options. As you spoke metallurgically, there's some things that shouldn't stick together, right? As far as stainless steel to copper, what are your what are your thoughts? The stainless and copper should work well together. Nickel and copper are very compatible metallurgically, so I don't think we'll have any issues. Same deal with the carbon steel you're holding now. It's right. gonna weld very similarly. There's a little less nickel, but generally speaking, I think it's gonna be pretty good. The last one here is something I've never done before, but hypothetically should work, is we're gonna try to weld some copper to some aluminum. It might be a matter of trying a few different filler materials, but we'll see what we can do. So we got our IPG Light Weld XR1500 today. We've done a a little bit of tweaking of the parameters off the camera to get a good butt weld between these materials, at least for the stainless and the copper. So we're running 550 watts, 50 hertz wobble frequency, and a 1.4 millimeter wobble length. That wobble length ties directly over into the wire feeder that we're using. We're using 045 308 LSI. Now, 045 wire is about 1.2 millimeters in diameter. So our wobble length is just a little wider than our wire here. And we'll be running our wire for this experiment at 16 inches per minute. The other wire feeder is set up too with 045 silicon bronze. Make sure you suit up with your laser safe stuff, guys. It's a different type of welding, so it's a different type of safety. We got our laser safe glasses, laser safe hoods, laser safe barrier. We're locked in here. No one's gonna open up this door. If they do, then the laser's gonna cut off. So everything's safe. Everyone inside's got glasses in, face protection on. Let's weld some stainless to copper. Let's do it. Gonna make a butt weld. Do you want something underneath that? Yeah, we do. I've actually got a few plates over here. Put a few tacks in here. Now, as far as laser welding copper in general, what is the hardest part about it? Copper is actually very reflective to the wavelength we're using. So we're using 1,070 nanometer light, and copper is about 95 to 98% reflective to that wavelength. So the trick is really coupling into the copper. Once the laser couples into the copper, your absorptivity goes up, and it's only about 70% reflective. The trick is just kicking in and building that melt pool. 10-4, let's see it. Make sure we're not gonna weld this to your table. It's my favorite part about lasers. Oh crap. I'd say that I got free confusion, son. Oh my god. I wish I could see the weld. We got 550 watts. 50 hertz, 1.4 wobble. That is correct. Just laser welding in general is just so like anticlimactic. It you really know, is. Compared to other welding processes, like that is pretty incredible the fact and speed that you there's, can get. There's those no sparks, to. there's no excitement. We got full penetration there on the root. And we're going to, of course, bend the snot out of it too. And you can see with the color of it, it actually did mix that copper in. How hot is that? The stainless is a poor conductor of heat, so the stainless is very cold away from the weld, but that copper conducts heat so quickly. Yeah, that's much hotter. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> that is much hotter. So let that sucker cool off and get this carbon done. This is also like almost three times the thickness of the Yeah, there's piece a dissimilar too. thickness going on here too, just based on the material we had on hand. One of the questions I get from people a lot is whether or not laser can join materials that are different thicknesses. And it actually can. There's not a lot of conduction that goes on when you're laser welding material like this. When you're arc welding thin material to thick material, you gotta kinda balance your puddle Especially between the with two. Especially copper. Especially yep. if you're trying to do a dissimilar metal because the copper has just this, it sucks it up all that heat. It conducts everything so quickly. Once it's hot, it just runs away. Yep. Especially with a thickness like that, it would be a tough weld to yeah. make. It makes no difference to the laser. The energy density of the laser is so high and we're concentrating all that power in one spot, it doesn't have time to run away on it. It doesn't matter if this is a half inch thick. No. I've got customers that weld 40 thousandths aluminum to half inch plate. Not a problem. Let's tack this up. We'll go back to our welding program away from our tack program here. Let's do it. It looks just the same to me. 
exactly the same. The same parameters. The materials are going to perform very similarly. Looks good. And what's the backside look like? You got a little squirt through on that copper. And I think do. it's still penetrated. Yeah, I think it penetrated all the way. You can see some evidence of fusion there on the backside. You've got a little bit of the root there all the way along the bottom of that joint. How are we going to weld this aluminum to copper? We got a few pieces of material here. We might as well throw uh, a bead of silicon bronze down there and see what happens. Kind of try to braze it together. And then as a backup, we've got some 5356 filler that we'll load up and we'll try as well. One thing that we're going to do differently here now that we're going to be welding aluminum and copper is we're actually going to change where the focal position of the laser is relative to the part. So everything we've done so far with the copper and the stainless steel, we've used a 10 millimeter spacer on the end of the torch. We're gonna shift that and use a seven millimeter spacer, which is actually gonna push the focus position a little bit deeper into the part and help us couple more efficiently to these very reflective materials. Sick. So we actually need to tell the photodiode in the laser torch now that we're welding aluminum instead of steel because it's looking for a specific amount of light coming off of the part and we're not getting as much light off of that aluminum. So I'm gonna switch this over and tell it that we're welding aluminum now and change those photodiode settings and we should be able to make some good tacks. There we go. Woo, blew a hole right through that aluminum. We might have to pulse it a little bit on this tack. There we go. Let's adjust our settings just a little bit. Now it's tacking up real nice, actually. So we had our first tack weld that was way too long and blew that aluminum away. So we turned our tack time down. That's the cool thing about the laser I think a lot of people don't realize is we can actually program in a tack length. And so all you do is pull the trigger and let it do the job. We reduce it from 800 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds and we've got a, a pretty nice tack. Whoop! Like I said, metallurgically compatible. You know yeah, how aluminum likes to it. crack? You gotta make it happen. Well, We're gonna add wire, dude. There's no way you can autogenously tack weld 6061. Right. It's impossible. It cracks. So as as a lot of what I do with the laser is just do a little stitch weld with filler wire. So we'll do the same thing here. We could do a lap weld. That won't actually require any tacking. Let's do a lap weld and then see if we can't break it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, the center metallics cracking and fracturing. Yeah. Super brittle. And yeah, you can see actually on the side of this copper, we've actually got a very thin layer of aluminum. Often what happens is you actually have an unmixed zone at the edge of your fusion zone in these dissimilar middle welds. And that is where our intermetallic is probably formed and shattered right on the edge of that fusion zone. Well, maybe we try the aluminum wire. Let's try the aluminum wire and see what happens. We're welding 5052 that we're welding to pure copper. We'll have some aluminum, magnesium, silicon, copper, Just a nonsense alloy. Board. That's a smorgasbord indeed. Let's load up that new wire. We, we switched over from the silicon bronze to some 045, 53, 56 filler. We're gonna see if that makes any difference. And we haven't done any of this before, so we're doing it live. You'll learn with us. All the same parameters, the only thing we've changed is our filler material. You don't want tech mode? We're good, no, we're just gonna do a stitch weld on both sides and then rip it. Woo, that was spattery. We made a, a tri-metallic weld at the end there. Dropping our power because we shot right through that aluminum. We'll weld over this hole. That would be better. No I, didn't, I didn't hear any tings. popping or tinging, so we'll see what happens. Rip it. Hmm. Uh-oh. There's some cracking and popping. Oh, and I'm also. So I think actually what we're seeing now is a different. Woo! Oh, it's getting crazy. Yep. <laughs> that peeled so easy. That, that peeled right off. Well, I doubt we're actually getting any mixing from that stainless backing plate there. Yeah. But you can see it pretty much failed in the same way as when we had that silicon bronze. If we switch to a different alloy in aluminum, 
Do you think that could help? Yeah, I think it could. So I think if we switched over to like 2219, which is solution strengthened with copper, and we use some 2319 filler, I think we could probably get a pretty good weld between aluminum and it's, copper. It's really not rocket science or even laser science. It's metallurgy, just metals don't typically mix well. However, there are certain metals that are customly made to mix well. So as long as the metals mix well, then it sticks well. That's right. But the point is, we were able to do this type of weld. The compatibility between copper and stainless steel and carbon steel is there. You should see success in stuff that we're doing here. Even with these yeah. being dissimilar thicknesses, that stress riser on the back didn't seem to affect it, affect it much. And it didn't even peel at the root like we were saying earlier. Yeah, it's still full penetration on the full thickness of that copper piece. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, and it's way more effort to actually bend this. You saw with the aluminum and the copper when we had those brittle intermetallics, we could just unzip it with our bare hands. It's no different with any other welding process. Now, like I, like I said, we could probably set some new laser settings. As again, it's something that's new, that's never really been tested. But as far as like this carbon steel, for example, to that piece of copper, fully wrapped around, completely welded, full penetration. It's no secret, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. I know I enjoyed doing some testing with the lasers. I think I saw what I needed to see and I kind of expected these things, unlike some of the other testing we've done. So I really want to see more testing to be done. Maybe we come up to Washington to the Handheld Laser Institute and really dive in deep on some of this testing. Yeah, I'd love to have you guys up. I've got metallurgical testing equipment, tensile testing equipment, a bunch of lasers. We can go into the nitty gritty about how the process works, what makes it different from arc welding how to tune in your process and make it perfect and really have those code-worthy handheld laser welds. You heard it from the laser professional himself. Let us know down in the comments below. We'll see you on the next weld. See you later, YouTube. Go way down into the nitty gritty about how all this works and what we need to do to make some high quality code-worthy laser welds. Actually, if you, um, yeah. <clears throat> Come on in. I saw on the internet that I can weld any metal with a laser to any other metal with lasers. We're gonna do it, right? I've seen some pretty crazy welds. That doesn't mean they're good. But we're gonna do everything we can to make good welds between dissimilar materials. Let's do it one more again.